there, viewers. Thank you for tuning in to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today we have a 2013 3 Series. It is an N55 F30. And the customer's concern is a stalling issue. And also the check engine light came on. Um, first thing I did was a pre-scan. Well, first thing I did actually was bring it in. And it was tough to because it kept dying on me. I brought it in. Uh, popped open the trunk and put a maintainer on it uh, in order to do my start begin my pre-scan and while I was doing that I found that the battery terminals were loose there was the FRM module just laying there so there's there's been work done to this vehicle but the only concern we're addressing at this point is according to the customer's request it is the check engine light and the stalling issue now before I recreate the concern I already pulled the codes and we have as you can see a <coughs> DME has 17 faults on it and a lot of other faults but for now let's just take a quick look at the report so we have a permanent code of a 5 volt sensor supply to voltage out of valid range we have intermain codes after that starting with charging pressure control switch off as consequence that sounds to me that the turbo has been deactivated as a consequence of another issue uh, we have an intermittent code of a charging pressure sensor plausibility after run pressure too low could that be related to our 5 volt sensor supply we don't know we have an intermittent code of power management standby current violation standby current meaning meaning parasitic draw uh, so standby would be sleeping current so there is a parasitic draw on this vehicle sometimes that happens if a battery has been changed which this battery is has been changed and a battery registration has not taken place we have a rail pressure sensor signal permanently stuck that's a good heads up right there um, <laughs> on Toyota's a rail pressure sensor has been known to short out the 5 volt reference causing a no communication with the PCM that may be what's happening here except we do have communication with the PCM we could look at the live data uh, let's take a look we have combustion misfires several misfires detected it looks like we have all but number six here that could be a result of a 5 volt reference coming down if, if these, these vehicles if the pressure sensor it says it's stuck permanently it could be giving the wrong amount of fuel to these cylinders uh, we have other codes, several cylinder misfires, exhaust gas damaging after startup. So it is cylinders that are bad enough to cause catalytic converter damage. Um, <clears throat> and that usually will be accompanied with a flashing check engine light. And we have after startup immediately. So, so we're going to have to fix the permanent code, the 5 volt reference issue before we uh, get this thing to idle correctly so let's go ahead and recreate the symptom let's uh have you guys see this as you can see we are at key on engine off i'm going to hold the brake and start this car up or at least try to okay so it doesn't want to start i'm gonna hold the gas and see what happens Okay, it started and it's idling. And the customer did mention that it was intermittent. Sometimes it did happen, sometimes it didn't. So we could be dealing with an intermittent issue here. Actually, nah. As soon as I put it into reverse, this thing died on me. Okay, I can't get this thing to start right now, and I'm not going to abuse the starter. So, we're just going to stick to our guns, head under the hood, pull this thing twice in order to release the hood. And I'm going to set up the camera so that we can take a look at the fuel rail pressure sensor voltage, see what happens if we disconnect this, take a look at what happens uh, to live data in order to keep the bus awake. We keep the parking lights on. It works for me. And just in case I've heard in some cases I could be wrong. You put the seatbelt on as well. So that's what keeps it alive. 
we're going to keep an eye on it and uh, disconnect it and see. All right, so we are under the hood and we're going to keep an eye on our live data and disconnect it, see what happens. So here's our fuel rail pressure sensor right here in the back. And it does move. So there is continuity between the signal of the pressure sensor and the DME. So that's a good sign. As you can see, our pin one is yellow and red. Our middle one appears to be black and blue. And our third pin appears to be just a light blue. So let's go ahead and see if we can measure our 5 volt reference and compare that to our signal. So looking up our diagram, let's find out exactly which wire is what. This is a sedan, it's a four door. And let's uh, press control F for find and put rail and I see nothing yet I see we see it down here so we can see that our sensor ground is our black and green according to the diagram our blue is our sensor supply on channel A is going to be our supply so we've got our red channel here and I'm going to hook this up to our signal all right so we are hooked up so we are grounded to the body ground on the on the vehicle i was going to use the ground on the supply to the sensor but i think i'm having a contact issue we could see that with the key on engine off our supply is five volts our signal is zero we saw a change when disconnecting the sensor uh, now that the sensor is disconnected, I want to take a look at the codes and see if our code, our DME 5 volt code has become a intermittent code because if so, this that would mean that we are on the right path here. Let's see if we can find our... Okay, so there's our DME monitoring 5 volt supply voltage value voltage out of valid range it has become an intermittent code when it was at first a permanent code and if we connect it let's take a look at what happens in our scope capture along with a new code reading so our supply has brought come come down to four volts and our sensor still shows our signal still shows zero for some reason ah uh, there's a continuity issue so instrumentation, uh, always be careful. So let's try that again. We're going to disconnect our fuel rail pressure sensor, make sure our 5 volt um, wire is on there good, our back probe. And for some reason, it's not. So you always have to be careful when back probing. Let me try a different probe. Can't stress it enough. Always check your work. Make sure your probes are good. Make sure you're making good contact. For some reason, it doesn't want to stick. And I don't feel like... Okay. My goodness. I may have to hold it there. So as we can see, our signal... doesn't want to stay <laughs> remember our signal is what's coming back this it jumps up to five volts as a continuity check if i hold it there it'll stay as soon as i let it go this pin doesn't want to make contact so i may have to probe this wire and reseal it afterwards So we've got our little probe, pierce probe here. And this is how we're going to do this one. And that's it, we have a permanent connection, my goodness. So as you can see, our reference and our supplier are both good. Let's see what happens when we connect it. They are matched. The supply jumps to four volts 
and so does our signal. So what does that tell us? That there's it's it's shorted in there. Let's take a look at our codes again. See if our code comes back to being permanent. And our 5 volt reference does become permanent again. So we've proven that not only do we have a 5 volt reference circuit issue when the fuel rail pressure sensor is connected, but the fuel rail pressure sensor is shorted internally. So we're gonna have to change all this fuel rail pressure sensor and take it from there. All right, so we've got our new sensor here, straight from Bosch. And we are just gonna do a quick before and after. We're looking at our codes right now and our scope is showing four volts even. And our codes right now are show is showing a permanent five volt code, five volt supply code. And we're gonna go back see what the live data is one more time just to overkill this and uh, be a hundred percent of our diagnosis we could go back to rail and our rail shows 3283 psi I'm about to disconnect it right now disconnected we show a hold on my my lead wants to come out if it was truly my signal wire we would see my live data also fluctuate but it is not we are at a steady for 4,000 psi I'm having an issue with these probes here okay so now we have good continuity and we did actually see a change Could that be as a result of my wiring of my scope? Yep. My scope is actually adding somewhat of a, res a resistance to the reading. So keep that in mind there. So with the scope on, we have a steady reading of 3994. We're going to hook up our connector to our new sensor with no pressure in it. And we have 14.5 psi that's atmospheric pressure right there let's go back to our reading codes and i like that a lot that it shows atmospheric there i think we've proven a fix already uh, we have an engine oil pressure sensor plausibility that's probably because of the five volt reference that i'm messing with but we see that our 5 volt sensor supply voltage code has become intermittent once again. So we're going, we're going to install this sensor once and for all and call this a fix for this particular concern. And we're going to go ahead and start the vehicle uh, right after that. So I'll go ahead and change out this sensor and we'll get right back to you. So the engine has been kept off. We're going to go back to our live data and see if our data matches with key on engine off. Uh, the rail is emptied out right now. Let's go ahead and put pressure. Hopefully it'll show both. We have charging pressure, fuel low side pressure, and fuel rail pressure. So let's go back into the car. All right, so now we're in the vehicle. We're about to start this uh, sucker up and see if we have a confirmed fix. Beautiful. At idle, we have about a thousand psi. Is that good or not? We don't know yet because we couldn't trust the fuel rail pressure to begin with. But now we will see what uh, what comes up. I believe the description does show a specification. I will have to check it against that. But at the very least, we have a good fuel rail pressure sensor. The vehicle idles well. I'm going to clear the code. The customer will be presented with the option to um, attack the other code, the parasitic draw code. And we don't have any misfires right now. We do have other codes there, intermittent. Let's go ahead and clear all of them. 
Of course, if the vehicle is stalling, you may have other codes related to air mass and whatnot. So keep that in mind. So reading codes, no fault detected. Let's go ahead and start it up. It does have a bit of a misfire. Let's see what we have. No fault codes detected. Hmm. Felt like a run, a rough running. Oh. We may be having an issue with the fuel system. But no fault codes detected. This may turn into a separate diagnosis here. We went from having a stalling issue to now a separate issue here. And it runs terribly. Hmm, is there something I should be resetting? Maybe we should be resetting adaptations because we just replaced the part. Let's see. Let's go ahead and delete adaptations and start the sucker over. Okay, let's continue on. All right, we're gonna let this vehicle go to sleep for a while and come back with uh, starting the engine, letting it idle for two minutes so that a basic adaptation can be condu uh, conducted. All right, so we'll ba we are back. Let's go ahead and uh, get this thing started for at least two minutes before we uh, do anything else. I do hear something though. Wanna read our codes. We have an intermittent air mass system plausibility. Hmm. Let's go ahead and clear it, see if it comes right back, because it seems to be one of those codes that, you know, it's a one-trip set, so let's just be 100% sure. See if it's the real deal. It does run like crap. So as you guys can see, every now and then we are confronted with a vehicle that comes in with one symptom. You fix the issue at hand and then something else arises. So as you guys saw in the pre-scan, um, there was no code of such with the air mass uh, implausibility issue. Um, this could be anything really. It could be a carbon um, caked up intake valve ports, um, intake valves. It could be, you know, at this point, we're just going to have to dig in. We, honestly, we may have to uh, request more diagnostic time. This is a separate issue. And it's the reality of, of what we have to deal with every now and then. So it's just the way it is. Uh, if you guys want to see one more time, that's the code we're getting now. And it sucks. But at the very least, we are taking this step by step, you know. This is why documentation is important. It is everything in this industry so that things like this don't catch us by surprise. The customer doesn't feel like they're getting ripped off. You know, we're, we're documenting the whole thing step by step. So there's no way we could have ever seen this coming with the vehicle in the condition that the vehicle came in with. So let's go ahead and see if we can uh, get some more diag time and continue on this, uh, the chase. <laughs> So the plot thickens a bit. We reached out to the client. It is actually uh, someone who buys cars and sells them. When they bought it, it came with the belt, with no belt actually. And um, we explained to them what was going on with this code that we saw. I remember seeing this in Seth Thorson's class when I went over there. Um, he's from LMV Bavarian, that is his uh, company. And I remember seeing this code before. It is the code that you're supposed to call in sick the next day for. Um, they, he explained the certain case studies where 
it ended up being either timing or an engine on these things. And that stuck with me. I reached out to him and I asked him, hey, is this the code that you were talking about, the code from hell? And he said, yep, that's the one. And so we got it. <laughs> we, got a, we got the lucky draw here. This is the one code. This is like the last code anybody wants to see, apparently. Um, some, of you who, some of you who work on this a lot, you know what I'm talking about. So first thing I did, and the first, the only thing we've been uh, approved for at this moment was to give it a smoke test, uh, considering that the belt broke and we actually found some pieces of belt right here. We can see that piece right there of a broken belt just hanging out. And with these engines, that belt breaks and gets thrown in through the crank seal. And I doubt that the camera will be able to pick it up, but I do see very, very light smoke coming out of this area here. I'm suspecting that the crank seal is not fully sealing and is allowing unmetered air to enter the crankcase and that affects our uh, air mass calculation as well. It's unmetered air. Also, we have another leak over here, as you can see, hopefully. Can you see that? Can you see the smoke? It is coming from down underneath and coming up through the hose. And then we also have another one over here. There's an aftermarket intake tube right there. This aftermarket intake tube also has a hose that is coming into it, a tube. And it is also leaking, but at this moment, it is too early to show it because the smoke machine hasn't fully filled up the system. But I know I saw it before. Anywho, the perch valve is also disconnected. And just to make sure that it is not leaking. And it is actually not leaking. So that's a surprise. But it's okay. And we're going to deal with that first. Before we go any further. It's the only thing we can do. Whoops. It's the only thing we can do at this point. And... Um, they may end up uh, changing out the crank seal. And if none of that fixes it, we're going to dig, dig in deeper. But at this point, that is all we're authorized to do. We did a smoke test. We found three sources of leaks. We'll keep you posted. Uh, we don't know how far this will go. This could be a very deep diagnosis. It could be you know, something as simple as an air leak. I did pop off the uh, oil filler cap and it didn't show an excess amount of crankcase pressure as one would expect from a messed up crankcase breather system. At this point, we're, that's all we're going to do at this time. All right, so I've got the vehicle back with me. Came back from the shop that had uh, given it to us in order to diagnose it. And, <clears throat> and the, the symptom is gone. It's not stalling consistently anymore. And I checked all the codes and they are gone. But before we go ahead and show you that, just to go through what I believe they did. At the very least, they did tell me that the crankcase, I'm sorry, the front main seal was replaced. And while they were in the replacement of that seal, they went ahead and picked out all of the fragments of belt <laughs> that was within the crankcase. And I don't know that they fixed, they probably threw some O-rings on these hoses and called it a day. It looks like they cleaned some stuff up. It does look a lot cleaner in that area. We do have that tension of going wild, but, um, you know, we did our job. We diagnosed it, smoke tested it. It looks like in this case it was unmetered air that was the issue. So the mass air mass plausibility issue, unmetered air, doesn't like it. So, whoa, hold on. Let's get back in here in the car. And we can go ahead and see that we have no codes here. And let's go into our DME. And our check engine light is off. Idling fine. Uh, I didn't do anything except for read codes. But just in case, let's go again. One more time. No fault codes detected. Before I left, before I gave it back to the 
original shop, this thing was going nuts. I'd like to go ahead and thank each and every single one of you for hanging out on this one. It was definitely um, fun. You know, we started out with an original concern of the fuel rail pressure sensor causing the 5 volt reference signal to get um, sorted to each other and skew other sensors in their readings and then we fixed that and then it turns out we have a air mass plausibility issue but that turns out to be uh, the crank the front main seal at the crankshaft it you know having a backstory having the history on these things is, is paramount to uh, fixing so without the backstory of, of without knowing that the belt was broken and that um, the crankcase I'm sorry that the front main seal had the belt fragments enter it we probably would have had a lot rougher time um, you know but even then code setting criteria is good to look at it doesn't say necessarily uh, it does speak on crankcase pressures and this and that but it doesn't really spell it out for you too well but knowing what we know about other vehicles and how they interpret their codes is also it's also a pretty nice help uh, knowing that there's you know it's it's expecting a calculated amount of air mass yet what's coming in is different you know uh, unmetered air kind of jumps at you but even then it could always be something else we don't know we never know until it's we're confronted with it so every car is different every case is different uh, having all the data and information you can helps and we're gonna move on to the next one call this a fix uh, thank you all for joining me on this one uh, I'd like to tell you all I would like to wish you all a great week be sure to subscribe hit like leave a comment have you seen this before what was it in your case what, what, what was it that fixed it since there's so many things <coughs> excuse me since there are so many things that could come into play here I mean even engine breath breathability is uh, something that could come into into this you know variable valve lift that is incorrect that could affect how much air should be flowing in there so there's a lot of variables on this one let's not let's not take for granted um how lucky we got on this one <laughs> and what have you seen with these codes be sure to share leave your comments down below and uh till next time <laughs>